Well, today is uh, Thursday, the third day of July 2014. My name is Derek. Welcome to today's silver chart video. Two weeks ago today, encountered this gain from uh, going from below 20, just a bit below, but raising up to a bit below 21. 10 days have passed and it's uh, found support at this key Fibonacci level rather than resisting it in a range of about, well, we'll take the lower end of it, which is 20 and three quarters, up to the upper part of this now, which is uh, 21, 28. Ah, about a 50 cent range, but really about a 30% range for the most part. Therefore, I'm liking how much it's been holding above here, showing more and more that this potentially might be that failed breakdown because it's been holding and staying well above the significant uh, Fibonacci level for an okay amount of time. Again, this is a 10th day of going sideways, enough to, of course, to reach this 18 average band. So there's the uh, first support test within it. I get the think the key is going to be now breaking, of course, this resistance point because that's the next step after reaching this band is to break established resistance. And we're going to establish resistance at right here, 21.28, which is the 76.4% uh, Fibonacci retracement. The uh, upper band is now set in at uh, 22 which will pretty much stop going higher very soon unless of course price action uh, goes higher but if it keeps going sideways or lower then this band is going to start to flatten out upper band will still be rising for a little bit but again it's also going to be needing higher gains to continue going higher but all signs within this is showing that uh, probability odds should favor of course that making the move here compared to any moves in this general area here, which is well now below the uh, 18 average band. Of course, the COT reports do state that uh, the big commercials are shorting, and we'll see if that does play out. If it does, well, then it would be one of those self-fulfilling prophecies. But for now, two weeks holding within this, and uh, tomorrow's video, I'll probably do the weekly chart for silver as that's uh, the end of the week. And I don't think much will be going on being the 4th of July, the United States holiday. My guess is the markets will can keep trading until roughly around uh, 12 or 1 p.m. Eastern time. And then that will be it for the weekend. I did a question yesterday, which was uh, this bath based question on holding 46.137 grams, how would you separate it amongst all of the different metals of gold and silver? I put in two different ratios, 44 and a fifth, and this one here. To show the answers, we have 46.137 grams, and we have to give a gold, a, 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 an ounce of gold, which is 31 and change. Well, if we find out what that is, we, uh, 31.1034768 grams of something is one troy out. So we know we start with 46.137. And what I did here is I take this number, I subtract one ounce because I've got to give an ounce of gold. That will give me a remaining balance of 15. I know a half ounce would be over 15 and a half. So we're not, so it's under that. So the next I can do is a quarter, which is impossible to give two. Because if you ever to give, why would you give two quarters when you can give one half? Anyway, I took uh, that number and subtracted what a quarter ounce would be, and I needed, there's one gold coin. For a tenth of a coin, I know that's about 3.1, and I have 7.25 left, so I know for sure I'm going to need two one-tenth coins, which will bring me to 1.03 grams. The one twentieth, well, if one-tenth is a 3.1, that means one twentieth would be about 1.5, so I don't have enough. For a 120th coin, I have to move on to silver. What I have done is the ratio is 44.2 to 1 in this example. So I take 44.2, multiply what remaining balance I have, which is 45.8. Very similar to this number here. Same thing, an ounce of silver, which would subtract it to 14.7 grams of silver left. Take a quarter down. We can take it down to 6.95. Same thing again with the, the 110th. 6.2 off of that would bring it to 0 0.73. So that's where I get the amount of silver that would be needed. That would leave me with, uh, when I do the conversion, the ratio in this case of 
the silver to copper ratio is one point or 122 and then all of these decimals which I copied and pasted from another calculator and it was uh, 89.9 so I know I can get two ounces of copper so I subtract 89 point well this number by double this gives me 27 and that's how I would end up getting the copper for the remaining variables. When it was all said and done, I had 1.32 grams of copper, which isn't much, and I multiplied that by the gold to, the gold to copper ratio of 5421. That's what the remaining balance was. Final question that I'm going to do, or the next question, and that's science. Over 1,000 feet above the ground, there are two coins that are vertically level with each other and 20 feet apart. One coin is a one ounce gold maple leaf bullion. The other one is a one ounce silver maple leaf bullion. Both coins are held by a rope below a blimp. Gold has an atomic weight of 196.967, while silver's is 107.868. Both coin ropes are broken at exactly the same time. The plains below contain no trees, but the terrain has very small hills where the highest point can be up to 9 inches from the lowest terrain point. Which coin will always land on the ground first? A. Gold B. Silver C. It's random D, whichever coin lands, lands on a higher terrain, and E, both land at exactly the same time. My original plan was to come out and play around with this question for a little bit and then give you what the answer is. I'm not 100% sure on what the answer is. I'm about 99.8% sure. I can tell you what it's not, and that's they both land at the exact same time. And I'd almost have to say C, it's random, is definitely not the correct answer, which leaves it to A, B, and D. For if there's no resistance whatsoever, and when you have this thing called air and wind, that's resistance, it doesn't matter the diameter or mass of two items, they will both land or they will both fall at the exact same rate, which means... That if there was uh, the terrain was exactly even, they would land at the exact same time. Therefore, because this terrain is not even, there's like no chance that they can land at the exact same time. That's why I'm ruling out this answer for that reason. However, you have two coins that have the exact same weight but not the same diameter. I would guess I'm 99% sure that the answer would be D. And I say that because even though the air is a form of resistance, I really don't think it's enough for this coin. And the reason why I'm doing this video is just something to do. And to get clarification to see if uh, there's some smart people out there who definitely know what this answer is. But as the two coins would fall, they would fall level with each other. Therefore, whichever terrain is higher than the other would technically land first but gold would have a smaller diameter and shape than the silver coin would, and a thousand feet, it's a, it's a decent distance above the ground. Just for fun, I've been taking two rocks, and one is about a pound, one is less than a gram. I drop them at the same time, of course, only five feet high. They land at the same time on the ground, which I find very interesting. Thank you for tuning in, and have yourself a great day.